5 minutes of challenger. Hey guys, it's Valkyrie. In the past, I've done a 5 minutes of diamond video that players found helpful. I wanted to do a slightly more in-depth video than the previous one, giving more insight on the values a lot of challenger players use to climb the ladder. Disclaimer though, by watching this video, you won't suddenly become a challenger player, but you'll probably learn some valuable tools in helping you climb the ladder. The first step is honestly just acceptance to all of these different topics. Understanding that what you're currently doing isn't really correct, and that's probably why you're stuck at your current ELO. Pause it, come back to this, a lot of information, accept this, read this, believe this, sleep by this, and you'll become a better player. Champion mastery is absolutely better than having a bigger champion pool. Why? Because if you have limited time, it's better to invest that time in the champions you enjoy and play well, because you also have more experience with those champions it's easier to learn all the matchups with those smaller pool of champions to ha than have a broader pool of champions. It just flat out is. It's, it's flat out the same for pro players, same thing for solo queue and climbing the ladder. Dual queuing gives you harder games. It flat out is true. The matchmaking rating is artificially inflated when you dual queue with someone else. That means that if the other team doesn't have a dual queue, then the teammates on your team are just flat out going to be lower ranked. Avoid dual queuing unless you have synergy with them. It's just true because the games are going to be naturally harder. Why put yourself through that unless you play well with them? It's important to play in roles that interact early mid game, but it's not absolutely necessary. As long as you and your dual queue partner perform well, you might have success with dual queuing. Respect the power that towers have in season four. When you're losing, you need to use towers to make a comeback in that game. Don't just fight out in the open. Go back to your towers, wait for the enemy team to make a mistake and you can very easily turn around to become the winning team. When you're a winning team, don't make that mistake by diving a losing team when they have crowd control. The tower is basically an OP fed six member to a team and fighting when that OP six member is around is technically a mistake because you might as well fight when they're not around if you can help it. But really understanding how to siege towers, it's that's a topic for another video. Baron will absolutely lose or win you a game. A lot of players in lower brackets of play will just ignore Baron because they've had a bad experience with losing a game because of Baron. Learning how to correctly abuse vision control around Baron will increase your chances of winning that game by a lot because Baron is one of the easiest tools to make a comeback victory slash win a game when you're ahead. Baron is amazing. Really learn how to use Baron, abuse Baron, and you'll win a whole lot more. Dragons are so undervalued in lower brackets of play. The first dragon is usually taken between 7 and 12 minutes for challenger and high diamond 1. And bronze to gold, 15 to 25 minutes is the first dragon. Almost twice as long. Challenger players just flat out understand that the value dragon has is immense. It gives way more gold in season 4. The more gold that your teammates have, even if they're performing poorly, they're going to play better the more items they have. Getting that dragon, that's gold on the map that's not always going to be there. All those towers are pretty much going to be there. Now, if you're able to take it or, or, or whatnot is a different story. But the dragon gold, it's, it's free gold experience. It gives it to your entire team, more gold than a tower. It's amazing. Really use it to your advantage. Crowd control is a consistent way to win games. Why? Because crowd control gives you an easy way to make picks happen. Get, and kills lead to objectives. Objectives win you games. So getting those picks around Baron, you use them and you get them because of crowd control effectively. Bronze Zodia might be a joke to some, but in Challenger, crowd control is a very highly valued thing. Now they don't necessarily use the same champions that are included in the Bronze Zodia. They use better champions, but crowd control is still very highly valued. Why? Because team compositions will naturally perform better with crowd control. It's easier to synergize when people have more crowd control because one crowd control once one CC effect goes off, it's easier to hit another one, especially when it's a skill shot. There are three nevers you need to live by. Never give up during laning phase, because absolutely anything can happen after. You can come back and win that game, I promise you. Don't give up. Never play like the game is already won. Even if you're super fed, don't go crazy. Don't go make crazy 1v5 plays. That's how games are slowly lost. Just take a breath, take a step back. Win it the slow and steady way, and you'll have more consistent results in solo queue. And the last one, absolutely never blame or start an argument in solo queue, because once that happens, it becomes more about winning that argument than actually winning the game. Playing more games in rank doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a faster chance of climbing the ladder. 
if you're playing like 10 or, or more games in a day, chances are towards the end of those games, you're probably not performing at your best. Someone that has less time to play, but when they're playing, they're at their best and they get a win-loss ratio of like 3 to 1 or 2 to 1, they're going to climb the ladder way faster than someone that's playing 10 plus games, but only going even in wins and losses. So play fewer games, focus those games on playing at your best, because once you start going on tilt, it's pointless to continue playing. Reviewing your mistakes will absolutely make you a better player. Use one of these resources, go back over your games, look for the highlights, when you died, what you did during team fights, what you could have done. These are how you correct your mistakes. These mistakes are why you're stuck at your current ELO. You correct them, you'll climb the ladder. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to check out my stream at twitch.tv slash Valkyrie, and I'll be streaming after the video and for the rest of the week. And I'll see you guys on my stream.